In Creole Parametric, there is a great application called the GDT Advisor for putting your geometric dimensioning and tolerancing into your models. To access it, you go to Applications, and then here we have GDT Advisor, and it opens up the interface. But unfortunately, I did not know how to use the GDT Advisor. Fortunately, there are a whole bunch of tutorials built into PTC's help. Here I am in PTC's help, which you can access by going to help.ptc.com. And when you go to the table of contents over on the left, there is a group of Creo tutorials. And here you can see the ones that are available. So we've got some beginners tutorials, IFX, we've got some ECAD, MCAD flow analysis, but you do not see GDT Advisor in this list. If you go to the model based definition category, and then Geometric Dimensioning and Tolerancing Advisor, and then GD&T Advisor. Down here, we've got the introductory tutorial, and there's a version for ASME and ISO. I will click on it. And what's interesting is that this tutorial is based on a part model from a figure in the ASME Y14.5 standard. So in this video, let me go through the first few steps of this tutorial where I am going to set up the datum reference frame. Okay, in the first step, I am going to define my primary datum feature. So I will click on the tolerance feature command over on the left-hand side of the ribbon. Now I am prompted to select one or more surfaces to use as the reference for that datum feature. And so I will click this particular surface from the part model. And now you get the add feature dialog box. There's a drop down list where you can choose how you're going to use this. I do want to use it as a planar surface. You can add more references if you want, but this is good. So I will click on the okay button. And now this opens up the tolerance feature ribbon. And first off, we have the name of the feature. I'm gonna change that to mounting plane as is instructed in the tutorial. And then you have a drop down list over here for the scheme and the choices are geometric tolerance, offset dimension, or size dimension. Well, with this one, we are going to set this one up with a geometric tolerance and the default one is for flatness. Here we can specify our value. I'll punch in the value of 0.05. And you can see that on the right hand side, datum feature is automatically selected and it's going to define this as the A datum. So all of this is good. I will hit the check mark. And so there you can see an annotation that is created. Let me bring my navigator open so that we can see our advisor tree. Here you get some warnings in here. And so before it's telling me that I didn't have anything constrained, but now it just tells me that not all of the degrees of freedom are constrained. Some surfaces of the design model are not constrained, but here are the elements of the GD&T advisor feature tree. And so there's the name of the part. Here we have the mounting plane. Here we have the planar datum A. Here we have the geometric tolerance. And then we have our uh, datum reference frame, which is starting to be built. Okay, so that is good for the first reference. Let me repaint the screen so that the DRF is no longer highlighted. For the second datum feature, secondary datum feature, once again, we will click on tolerance feature. And now again, we are prompted to select the surfaces and I'm gonna pick the shaft surface and it automatically selects both halves of the cylinder. I will click on, oh yeah, let me just show you from the shaft drop down list. All we have is shaft available in here. So I will click on the okay button. And once again, we get our dashboard open for the tolerance feature. And this one we are going to call the centering shaft. And then for the scheme, well, we have tolerance size or basic size. This is going to be a tolerance size. In other words, we're going to have tolerance dimensions. And if I rotate the model, you can see the tolerance dimensions that were pulled from the model and are now showing up as an annotation. Later on, I will move that. And so for the 
way that we are going to define this, we're going to use perpendicularity. That's the one that is suggested. And here you can see what is available to us, but perpendicularity is what we want. And then for the value, we will use 0 0.1, hit the enter key. And for the uh, material condition modifier, well, you could use regardless of feature size or maximum material condition or the least material condition. We're going to use the bonus tolerance, the maximum material condition. So everything is good in this area. And once again, datum feature is automatically selected. It's going to give it the datum label of B. Everything in here is good. So let's hit the check mark. And so there we have our annotation that is selected. And because it's right on top of the model, it's a little hard to select. So I'm going to use the selection filter down in the lower right hand corner to change to annotation. That way I can grab this and just move it a little bit out just so that it's no longer on top of the model. Okay, so that is good for the B datum. Now let's set up our tertiary datum feature. I will click on the tolerance feature command once more. And this time we're going to select this slot over here, which will eliminate the remaining degrees of freedom. So I will click on this particular flat surface. And right now it's using it as a planar surface, but we can also define this as a slot. And so it automatically picks up the other opposing surface that defines the slot feature. I will click on the OK button. And now for the name of the feature, we're going to call this the keyway notch. And we're also going to leave tolerance size as the way that we are going to uh, use for the scheme as opposed to using the other choices, size and offset or basic size. And so again, once it's pulling out the different dimensions from the model, and for this one, we're using a position tolerance. That is good. Once again, you can go to the drop down list and see the different options that are available. Let's use a value of 0 0.2 for this one. And once again, we will use the bonus tolerance, our max material condition. You'll notice that it's automatically using A and B as the references for this one. And once again, we are creating a datum feature, and it's automatically giving it the label of C. All is good for this one. So once again, we will hit the check mark. And so now we've got our other annotation created. I'm going to move it aside just because I don't like it. It's like squeezed up in between our uh, extension lines or witness lines, whatever they're called over there. Uh, so anyhow, if we want to see how far along we are in the process, there is a button on the ribbon for showing and hiding the constraint set. I will click on it. And here you can see down at the bottom of the navigator, we have a legend. So everything that is in green is currently fully constrained, which are the references that we have currently selected and partially constrained. Well, nothing is partially constrained. Everything else is in gray because it is unconstrained. And in the next video, I'll show how to set up a default surface profile for all the remaining surfaces in the model. But there you can see the state. And as you continue on working in the GD&T advisor, you can leave show hide constraint set state. Let me try that again. You can leave show hide constraint state turned on so you can see the status of your model as you are applying all the different geometric tolerances in order to fully constrain the model. So there you have it. That is the first part of the GD&T advisor demo that comes from PTC's help.